using our test. I hope everybody's having an awesome day today. I don't know if you've noticed anything different about me. Anything unusual? <laughs> New shade of lipstick? How did you guess? No? That's not what you were thinking? New dress? Yes, thank you. Just finished it last night. No, not also, not again what you're talking about. Oh, oh wait, you mean this? Yes! So today we're going to be making thinking cap sculptures. Now, look, I know that walking around with a great big masterpiece on top of your head isn't for everybody, and I get it. Not really, I mean, I don't understand it at all, but if you don't want to make a masterpiece thinking cap, that's okay. You can still make one of these beauties and just simply call it a masterpiece sculpture. But that's just one <laughs> of the things that we will be working on today. We've got so much in store today from making a thinking cap sculpture to learning about how our brain works to even doing some science. But before we do any of that, let's go ahead and do our art class catchphrase. And for that, I'm going to need my hands since we do American Sign Language to help us communicate. I make messes. I make mistakes. But deep inside, I got what it takes. I am an artist. Awesome. Before we get rolling, let's give a big old shout out, high five to our friends at Dixon Ticonderoga. I'm going to be using some construction paper today. If you have construction paper to use, great. It's probably made by our sponsor. They make the best construction paper, which just happened to have the name True Ray. I'll be using True Ray construction paper, and I want to say thank you, Dixon Ticonderoga, for giving me some of that paper to use. Let's also talk about the other supplies you'll need. You'll need a plate, a paper plate, a styrofoam plate, but again, if you don't want to make this into a hat, or maybe you don't have a paper plate to spare, that's okay. You can simply use a piece of paper as the base or the bottom of your sculpture. For the rest of your sculpture, I'm using construction paper and then also just white paper. You could use loose leaf or lined paper, newspaper, basically y'all get creative. Any kind of paper that you have can be used. I decorated some of my paper with markers. You could use markers, crayons, pencils, permanent markers. And if you do decide you wanna wear it as a hat, you might wanna get a hole puncher and some string or yarn. If you want to join me in our science experiment, then we're going to be using cups of water, three, three paper towels, food coloring. If you don't have food coloring, and I know me, I only have two colors of food coloring, and what I really need are the primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue, and I'm missing yellow, so I have to improvise. That means I have to come up with an alternative supply to use. For me, I'm improvising with liquid watercolor. Look, I'm an art teacher. I've got this artsy stuff laying around, but you might not. So maybe you have some dried up markers you could use. Never ever throw those away. I'm going to show you how to not only turn those dried up markers into paint, but use them for our science experiment. All right, guys. Today, when we work on our sculpture, we'll be using, of course, the elements of art, but our focus is going to be line. Let's go through the elements of art really quick, and then I want to share with you something new to help you remember the names of lines. Are you ready? <clears throat> line, shape, color, baby, color, form, uh, value, texture and space. All right, I said our focus today was going to be line. And whenever I share line with my students, I do it with a little poem I wrote called Larry the Line. Larry is a pretend snake. Well, I guess he could be a real snake. I'm sure somewhere there's a snake around named Larry. And the cool thing about snakes is their whole body is able to make different kinds of lines. For now, I want you to have, make yourself a pretend snake like this. Take your arm like that, give it a little bit of a mouth. That's Larry. Do you see how easy that was? And then you're going to take your other arm 
and just slide it underneath layer. You don't have to hold it up like this, but just to help prop them up a little bit. And then you can say, hi, Larry. Hi, Larry. Larry doesn't really talk much, but he does like to give smooches. Ugh, disgusting. Don't nobody like snake kisses, Larry. No, they don't. Let's get started. I'll go first, and then I'll pause, and then you can repeat after me, okay? <clears throat> Larry the line is a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ugh. He can make three straight lines for me. Vertical, Oop. diagonal, Oop. horizontal, any curve he can learn with a twist and a turn when he's out of his tangle he makes a great angle any line he can make after all he's a snake mm -hmm. Mwah! Ugh, disgusting all right friends we're going to be using those kind of lines straight curvy, wavy, zigzag, and so much more when we are working on our thinking cap sculptures. So that's why it was so important for us to learn all about Larry. Okay, I think we're ready to get started. Pinkies out, please. I pinky promise that no matter what, I will try my very best and I will finish the masterpiece that I start. Mwah! All right, friends, let's get started. All right, friends, let's talk today about how we can go about creating our very own thinking cap. So if you decide that you don't want to turn this into a hat or something that you can wear, a wearable piece of art, you can simply use a piece of paper for the base of your sculpture. The base is what a sculpture stands on. If you think of the Statue of Liberty, she is standing on a base. A base is what holds the sculpture up so that you can look at it all the way around. That's what a sculpture is. That's what makes it different than something like a painting or a drawing. A painting or a drawing is flat. It's only interesting from one perspective or one point of view, but a sculpture has to be interesting from all different kinds of angles. So instead of just focusing on one area, you'll need to constantly be turning and moving your sculpture to make sure that it looks interesting all the way around. When you're drawing on a flat surface, you're thinking about the placement of things that's called your composition, but with a sculpture, you've got to think about your composition all the way around. So for your base, you can use a plate like me, a paper plate, a styrofoam plate, any kind of reusable plate. If you don't have a plate or you don't want to use one, you of course could use a piece of paper for your base. It could just be a flat sheet and that's fine too. I'm gonna to move this out of the way. I said that we're really going to be focusing today on lines. So let's go ahead and create some of our own papers for our sculpture. I'm moving my plate and my scissors out of the way, getting out a nice clean piece of paper. If you have paper, awesome. If you don't have a piece of paper, then don't worry about it because you could use something like the back of a sheet of old homework. You could use newspaper, a gr paper grocery bag, so many different choices, it's up to you. But if you have a white piece of paper or even construction paper, you can follow along with me now. I'm gonna take my piece of paper and notice that it's lying horizontally. It's going side to side. I'm going to fold it in half by taking the bottom of my paper and bringing it up to the top. So sometimes when I fold a piece of paper, if I'm not careful, it gets a little bit crooked or wonky. So let me show you a little trick. I'm gonna start at the bottom of my paper. I'm walking it up to the top and then I'm going to match up the edges, the bottom edge and the top edge. Then I'll hold it still with one hand. Hold it still hand. Got it, Miss Stevens. And then I'm gonna take my extra hand and smooth out the bump. 
smooth out the bump. Awesome, now I folded my paper in half once. I'm gonna do it again. I'm taking this bottom piece that's been folded, walking it up to the top, matching up the edges, hold it still with my fingers, and then smooth out the bump. Now, if you want to, you could go ahead and try folding it one more time. It's a little tough because there's now a whole bunch of pieces of paper folded up inside of there. So I'm just gonna smooth that down. Now I'm going to go ahead and open my piece of paper. And what I have when I open my piece of paper are a bunch of creases. If you look, each one of these creases has created a little line, a horizontal stripe going across my paper. I'm gonna smooth out my paper, move my little brain drawing out of the way, smooth this out a little bit, and you can see that I've got those creases and that will help me have the different little sections of my paper that I'm about to decorate. I'm going to use a red marker and I think right here in this little rectangle, I'll think of a line and repeat it, creating a line pattern. Hmm, I think I'll draw a vertical line. So I'm just drawing a line that goes up and down. That kind of line is called vertical. So I'm making a vertical line pattern, but you could do any kind of line pattern or line design or colors that you want to. I'm going to go, I think in rainbow order. So the next color, R is for red, O is for orange. Let's see, maybe this time I'll make straight lines again. This time I'll use that slanted straight line. It's called a diagonal. When you connect diagonals, they make a zigzag. So I'm just gonna make a zigzag all the way across. Maybe I could even add some little angles inside of my zigzag there and some up here. Cool, okay, if R is for red and O is for orange, Y is for yellow. Yeah, guessed it. Ooh, I think I'll do a loop-de-loop -loop line. I can even have some of the lines overlap or go over the other. You could draw any kind of designs that you wanted to on your paper. It's up to you. If you don't want to draw line designs, I'm gonna do like a wacky, kind of straight line with lots of angles. If you don't want to draw on a piece of paper, you could just use the paper that you already have. I like to just put my own personal touch on things, so that's why I'm decorating my papers now. And then any of my papers that I don't use, I know I can use them for something else later. I never ever throw away any of my scrap papers because you never know when you might have an art attack and you just gotta make some art. So go ahead and make a folder where you keep and save all of these scrap pieces of paper that you've made. I'm gonna start my rainbow over again, but maybe making a different kind of line. It's gonna be like a roller coaster. Can you imagine being on a roller coaster like that? Oh my gosh. And ta-da. All right, now that I've got all of my little line designs on my paper, I'm going to be cutting this paper apart. The best way for me to do that so that I can see where I'm cutting is to turn my paper over and you'll see that there are the creases where I folded my paper. That's kind of like a guideline for me to know where to cut. Now, if I'm going too fast for you, all you have to do is hit that pause button so that you can catch up with me. You could also just take a break from drawing if you wanted to and start cutting. Now when you're cutting, remember your scissors are always pointed away from you. We have to have slow, safe scissors. They're never angled towards you, they're always angled away. And your extra hand is holding your piece of paper. All right, I finished cutting out all of my pieces of paper, but if you don't wanna use papers that you've decorated, you could always use construction paper. I'm gonna take a couple of pieces of construction paper, hold them together, and just cut a strip just like that. And maybe I'll have some solid colors along with the paper that I created. 
All right, I think I've got enough papers for me to create my thinking cap sculpture. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. Now let's talk about how to create your sculpture. So I've got my plate because that's what I'm using for my sculpture base. If I were to take a piece of paper and just glue it onto my plate, that would be a collage. It would be a flat work of art. And the reason is, is because if you look at it, it doesn't look very interesting all the way around. It only looks interesting from one angle and that's right here. But instead of it being flat, we want it to pop out into space. We want it to look like a sculpture. So how could we do that when obviously the paper just wants to go flat? Well, there's two things we need to do. We first have to give the sculpture feet. Feet is what the sculpture stands on. And to do that, we will be using glue. So let's first talk about how to give this guy some feet. So what I like to do is I like to pretend that this is a little bird. The little bird is flying. You've got to catch the little bird. And then you have to give the little bird feet. And here's how you do it. You fold one end and then you go to the other end and you fold the other end. And then suddenly your sculpture has feet. He can walk, he can kick, he can do the splits. Ow! But what he definitely needs is some glue on the bottom of the feet to help him stand. You could use a glue stick, you could use a glue bottle, the choice is yours. I'm gonna use a glue bottle and you just need a little bit of glue. Let's see if I can get that glue to come out. Come on out, glue. Give it a little bit of glue. Oh, that tickles. Sorry. Oh, that glue is so cold. Sorry. Now, when I put this here, I have to decide on my composition. Where will I place my arched line? This is called an arched line. If you've ever been to St. Louis, or you're familiar with the arch that's in St. Louis, it's called the arch because, hello, it's the same kind of line as this. I think I'll put my arched line right there, but to give the glue enough grab time, I need to hold it and count slowly to 10. One, a two, a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then you must say the magic words, which are voila. There we go. Now I have an arch that's standing. Cool. Now I think I'll try one of my papers and I'm gonna do another arch. So let's think about those steps again. First step was give your strip of paper some feet. Fold one end, fold the other end, flip it over and a little dot, a knot, a lot. There we go. And to get it to stand, now I can start to think about where will this go? Could it be beside the first one, making kind of a tunnel? Could it be standing on top of? Could it have one foot here and one foot there? Yeah, I kind of dig it. Now, if you lay it on here and then immediately let go, you didn't give the glue enough grab time. It just won't stick. That's why it's important to not give it more glue, but just make sure to hold it in place to allow it to have enough time to stick. Now you can add as many arches as your sculpture as you like. You can see I used a lot of arches in my sculpture, but I also used a zigzag line and a spiral line. I wanna show you how to do that too. So let's talk about how to make a zigzag line. You'll take a piece of paper. Once you've got your paper, you're going to fold it like you're making a foot. But instead of going to the other end and making another foot, you're now going to fold the paper backwards. Fold it forwards, fold it backwards. Fold it forwards, fold it backwards, forwards and backwards. Now let's see what happens when we open it. It's a zigzag or an accordion. I'm gonna put the glue on the bottoms of those two little feet. Doot, doot. Oh, the tickles. Oh, that's so cold. I'm so sorry. I love to use zigzags to make things like stars or steps. So I think maybe I'll have 
some stair steps on this part of my sculpture. I like my sculptures to be really tall. That's why I keep stacking one piece of paper on top of the other. You could even make your sculpture get really tall by gluing a couple of pieces of paper together, making an arch that way. Um, you could do a loop-de-loop, -loop, which I think I'm gonna do that next. Let me show you how. This time, instead of putting glue on the bottom or folding feet, I'm just gonna put glue on the bottom of the paper at the ends. So I'm only putting glue at the bottom of the paper on the ends. This one you do have to hold for a while because the paper wants to flip back around. So I'm just gonna make a little loop-de-loop -loop like this is a roller coaster. There we go, I'm gonna hold this in place for a while so that that paper knows to stick. Then I'm gonna share with you how to make a spiral. You will officially know how to make four different kinds of lines. An arch, a zigzag, a loop-de-loop, -loop, and a spiral. And with those four lines, the possibilities of how your thinking cap will turn out are endless. I'm gonna take a pencil or you can use a marker. Taking the end of my paper, I'm just wrapping it around and around and around my marker. And once I've got that, hold it in place for a second, let it go. What? I've now got a spiral. I only have to put glue at the end of the spiral right there. Boop. Just a little bit. And I'm gonna set that right there holding it and counting to 10. Now I challenge you to use all of your papers. See if you can make a thinking cap with all of the papers that you've created. When your thinking cap is finished, let's talk about how to assemble it in case you want to wear it. You will need some yarn and you will need a hole puncher. So with your hole puncher, you'll wanna slide the little alligator mouth See the little alligator mouth? You're gonna slide it under his tongue, right there, his tongue sticking up. Slide it underneath and boom. Go directly over to the other side, slide it underneath and boom. Now I have two holes on either side of my thinking cap. With those two holes, you can now add yarn. I just used a long piece of yarn, about as long as my forearm from here to here, and I tied a double knot right there. I did that on one side, and then I did it again on the other side. Then you can just tie it under your cute little chinny chin chin, and voila, you have a thinking cap. Your amygdala helps you with your emotions. Right now, hopefully you're happy because you're creating and you're enjoying yourself. And so your amygdala is feeling a really happy emotion. And last but not least, there's your brainstem. And your brainstem helps your body do things without even thinking about it, like breathing or digesting your food. Think about all of those things that are happening right now between your ears inside your thinking cap as you're working on your thinking cap. Okay, now we are about to move on to our science portion of today. You can either continue working on your thinking cap or you can do what I'm doing. I'm just gonna take a little break, pile all the things on my little art making tray. I like to keep a tray full of my art supplies so they can stay all nice and neat together. And I'm gonna switch gears and we're going to do our science experiment. All right guys, for the science portion today, notice what supplies I have so that if you wanna join in, you can go grab them or you can just watch. Of course, always is a great idea to do any sort of mess making thing in a tray. A cookie sheet works great. The reason it's a good idea is because it has a little bit of a lip to it and that'll help contain our mess. The other thing we're using today is we're using three small dishes or jars or cups even. And those small dishes, jars or cups are each filled with a little bit of water, like maybe a quarter of a cup. I just put in a splash and each was filled with food coloring. I used blue, I used red, but you know what? This is green and I'm using the primary colors. I'll tell you about more about that in a moment, but since I didn't have yellow, which is the missing primary color, 
I use liquid watercolor paint. Now I'm an art teacher, so of course I have something like this on hand, but you might not. So what you could use are the following. If you don't have food coloring, you could use what's called tempera paint, the paint that you use, or you could even use markers. I have some dried out markers that instead of throwing them away, you can make a paint with. I put these markers in this jar earlier today. They were these three colors. And look, suddenly I have some paint to use or for my experiment. I like to usually leave these markers sitting overnight or until the tip of the marker turns white. That's one way to know that all of the ink has now drained out of the marker. But if you have food coloring, you can go ahead and get it set up just like me. The last thing I'm using today is paper towel. And I went ahead and I cut my paper towel into a rectangle that's about the size of my hand. So the primary colors are the colors that you must have in order to make all the other colors in the rainbow. Red, yellow, and blue, those are the primary colors. You cannot make these colors. You must have these colors to make all the others. So I'm gonna start by taking a paper towel that I've cut into a small rectangle. I'm going to fold that in half. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do a little bit of an experiment. I'm going to see what would happen if I put one side of my paper towel in the blue and the other side of the paper towel in the yellow. What will happen when those two colors go on the paper towel? You'll already notice that it's starting to climb up the paper towel and the blue is over here climbing up the other side. What color do you think they will make when they meet here in the middle? All right, we're gonna give it a little bit of time because it takes a moment for those colors to kind of walk themselves up to the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a paper towel, fold it in half. What will happen if we do the same thing to red and yellow? So I wonder, as those two colors start to climb up the paper towel, what will happen in the middle? Remember, our science word for when you wonder or guess about something is called hypothesize. So you could even keep like a little journal, a little sketchbook, a little note taking so you can think about what you're going to guess will happen here. And now I'm gonna take this one, dip it in the red, put it in the blue. So there are three primary colors, red, yellow, blue. Let's see what three colors they make when we combine red and blue, blue and yellow, yellow and red. And while those paper towels are working their magic by helping those colors climb up, I'm gonna do a little bit of experimenting right here. I cut some small squares of paper towel. I'm gonna put one right there and I'm gonna paint with my paint right here, with that watercolor. <laughs> it's not watercolor, with the food coloring. And I'm gonna get, I think I'll start with blue. I'm just gonna put some little blue dots of color right here on my paper. And I'm just letting it drip. And the cool thing is, is that the paper towel is so thirsty for any sort of water that it's helping those colors spread out. When a color spreads out like that, it's called diffusing. So the colors are diffusing or spreading out. All right, now that I've got those blue dots on there, I'm gonna clean my brush. Let's try and see what will happen when we add some of that yellow. <gasps> Can you see the secondary color that it's making? Look, I see green. How cool is that? It's like a tie-dye t-shirt, which also makes sense because when people do tie-dye, these are the three colors they use. They only need to use these three colors because they know these three colors will make the other colors in the rainbow. And yellow and blue, we just learned, makes green. Isn't this paper towel so fun? I think I'm gonna save it, maybe use it for something else. I'm gonna set it aside right now. I've got another one. Now let's see, what if we took yellow and I'm just putting those little yellow dots of paint on here. You know what you could do if you don't have paint? You could also use markers. You could take a yellow marker and color little yellow dots on your paper. And then you could put the next color, which for me, I'm going to use red. Once you've got red dots and yellow dots on your paper towel, get your paper towel wet. Go over to the sink, 
Turn the water on very gently, not a full blast. Put the paper towel underneath and watch what happens when those marker colors start to diffuse. What? I'm getting, I think, a little bit of orange. Kind of like a reddish orange, probably because my red is a little bit darker of a color than my yellow. All right, so now I know that blue and yellow make green, and now I know that yellow and red, they make orange. Cool, all right, I'm gonna set this aside, let it dry, do something fun with that. Last but not least, let's see what happens when we take red and blue. I wonder if you could figure out what color it will make. Think about what color we haven't made yet. Let's see, we've got red, I'm gonna go in the order of the colors, the rainbow, help me figure it out. Then we made orange with yellow. Then we made green with blue. So we've made every color in the rainbow except for the very last one. And that's <gasps> purple. It looks like red and blue make purple. Now let's see what fun thing could we do with these paper towels when they're dry? Could we use them in a collage? That would be really fun. Could we cut them out and maybe if we have dolls, we could make clothing for our dolls? I would love it if this was a skirt or a shirt for my dolls. So think about instead of just throwing away something that you've made, think about how you could repurpose it or do something completely different and new. All right, and now I'm just taking a look at my little experiment over here. I'm gonna add a little bit of color to help move those colors along, and yep, there's my green. I see it, it's happening right there. I just had to help it up a little bit. Let's see if I can get orange oh, immediately. All I had to do is put a little bit of red right there, and how about here, our last one that we made, Purple, how cool is that? Now we know what happens with this fun science experiment. Well guys, I hope you had so much fun today doing a little bit of science, learning about how your brain works, and making some art. I'll see you guys real soon.